Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Continue with exploration of the various different forces which make up the Klingon and Romulan empires respectively. This one, as you may know from clicking on the title, is about the 22nd century incarnation of the Romulan Warbird. This vessel was encountered by Starfleet, the Andorians, the Tellarites, and the Vulcans, although it very likely pre-existed this event but before we get started talking about it please like share subscribe and comment down below about the various aspects of this ship little facts about this vessel before we get started the ship might look familiar to a casual fan of star trek that is because like many times in star trek they reskinned an older design of ship that they had previously used one of these vessels probably not the Romulan version, was encountered in chaotic space in the Delta Quadrant by the USS Voyager, NCC 74656, Garda The vessel simply dubbed the fleet ship was in some ways more advanced than the USS Voyager, hence why it was definitely not a Romulan vessel. Also size. Rewinding to the 22nd century, the Romulans used a remarkably similar design that is the most alien looking ship the Romulans have probably ever used. This vessel was dubbed a warbird, but apparently in the 22nd century, warbirds were not the primary fighting vessels of the Romulan Empire. That was a gift given to the birds of prey. These vessels were relatively small and suitable for adaptation for the Romulans' needs for a very specific mission, which we will get to. We don't know much about the vessel in its stock form. What we do know is they were warp capable, stealthy, very well armed, and would have been crewed by Romulan, possibly Riemann crew as well, but most likely purely Romulan. As I said, these ships are relatively small, but it's a little hard to gauge exactly how big they are. That maneuverability would gain substantial upgrade in the 2150s when two of these ships were substantially modified by the Romulans to, be wor to work as marauders to attempt to disrupt the alliance growing in the Alpha Quadrant, something that seemed to threaten the Romulans. This was of course the precursor to what would be the United Federation of Planets, and it laid the foundations for not only the Romulan fascination with humans, but also what would be one of the most destructive, violent and costly wars for either power in the 22nd century, barring maybe the Zindi Crisis for humans, the Earth-Romulan War. Now, again, to be clear, although we don't know much about that conflict, we do know is it is referred to as the Earth-Romulan War. I think we can infer it wasn't really a Federation-Romulan War. Probably because it also predated the Federation, I think. Anyway, getting off topic. These two modified warbirds are the only ones we know to have encountered the Romulans utilizing. Whether they were an older ship or something that was going out of service and they felt they could bring it back to life with some other alternative technologies. The ships were not built from scratch to use this new technology known as telepresence, which was basically turning the ship into a remote controlled drone. But it could be controlled much more efficiently than an AI computer or by a group of people faking its controls in a mock bridge, which is sort of what they were doing. The telepresence technology required the use of a powerful telepath and the use of advanced subspace antenna arrays to give real-time control over the vessel's systems. On board the ship, auto advanced auto repair systems were installed. How exactly those worked? Not sure. Going to assume some kind of little robots fixing things. As well as a great deal of additional redundancy. This was accomplished by ripping out a lot of the ship's existing systems that it no longer needed. For example, life support. Meaning that when the vessel was boarded, there was no atmosphere, no gravity, and it was a fairly unpleasant environment. There was not really any lighting or anything, basically no wasted power. This afforded the vessel the ability to turn off or at least decrease its inertial dampeners while maneuvering and as well as use a heavily modified thruster assembly to make the ship incredibly maneuverable and hard to hit. These were all amazing features, but the vessel's main feature was a sort of chameleon circuit. It had hollow emitters as well as power regulators and sort of things all scattered all over the hull as well as massive amounts of subspace transceivers installed which I can assume again the vessel did not come with a standard because they were more likely needed for the telepresence unit and for masking its signature. The vessel was able to adapt its warp signature and well as create a holographic image of another ship or object around it and pretend to be that. It could also vary its phase 
frequencies of its weapons to mimic phasers, disruptors, or plasma weapons so as to mimic the types of weapons used by other races. It would then holographically project the image of, say, an Andorian vessel and use it to attack a Vulcan ship. This was all in an effort to try to cause a war. It would do this successfully. It would mimic Andorian ships that would attack the Enterprise, Vulcan ships, Tellarite vessels. It would even mimic the Enterprise itself and use it to attack and destroy a Rigelian freighter. This was a perf almost perfect camouflage that unless you'd encountered it a few times and knew what you were looking for like the NXO one did, humans using a more scientific, more analytical approach to things was the key to defeating this vessel. The other races just simply made an assumption that all rivalries and all hatreds it was them attacking them. Humans made the intuitive leap that perhaps there was more to it than that and they were able to work out that the power signature of the vessel, whether it was appearing as Tellarite, Andorian, whatever, it was the same. By doing this, they determined it was the same ship. Eventually, they determined that the Romulans were behind it. And eventually, with the help of the Enar, the race who were being used by the Romulans to control it, as the Romulans, if they had any telepaths amongst them, they were limited in number, weaker than Vulcans, and this required a very powerful telepath. And the Enar were about the only ones around, as I'm assuming they didn't know about the Betazoids at this point. Maybe the Betazoids hadn't achieved warp capability, who knows. So. These ships were eventually destroyed by making them destroy each other, but they they were very powerful and were not actually technically defeated by the other races, but thanks to the Romulans' foolish use of these vessels in an attempt to disrupt the Alliance, they were actually successful in strengthening it and probably leading to the very creation of the thing that they were most hopeful not to create, that being the United Federation of Planets. As I said, don't know much about the vessel, it could definitely keep parity at warp with Andorian ships which were faster than human vessels. It was armed with disruptors, it may have carried torpedoes in its stock form but we're not sure. And well, it basically was a well armed little ship. And although not the mainstay of the Romulan Navy, quite clearly it was definitely a versatile design. And these prototypes, although were abandoned as for political and military reasons within the complicated web that is the Romulan government, the technology wasn't really seen again, now that they knew, their enemies knew how to defeat it anyway. So there we have the 22nd century Romulan Warbird. When it was developed exactly we don't know. How old it is? Don't know. Did they continue to use it in the successive years? Don't know. Was it always armed with disruptors and photon torpedoes? Don't know. Probably I think is the answer, but don't know is more or less it. As with everything with Romans, what you don't know about it is usually more than what you do. I just want to take this moment to thank you for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, please check out my social links in the description box below to Instagram and Twitter and others. And there also is down there a link to my Patreon page where you can support this channel and the others as I try to grow this franchise and do this more regularly. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you for watching and bye bye.